curious about using Rust-Oleum chalk paint on your old furniture? Here's what you can expect and the mistakes I made when using it for the first time. This end table started out looking like this. Then we painted it to test out some paint. Months later, I used it to compare some sanders to each other and then it was left like this. So I finished sanding down the top to bare wood. And I sanded the rest with some fine grit foam to smooth out the brush marks from the old paint job. And since I hadn't used this piece to test out enough stuff, I used some Stripwell QCS stripper to remove the paint in the grooves on the top edge and in the few little gouges in the middle area. This stripper claims that it works on vintage finishes and I've had great success with it so far, but I wanted to see how it worked on a modern paint job. Sure enough, it worked very well. As time goes on, this stripper is becoming my favorite. Once the wood was dry, I lightly sanded it smooth with 220 grit sandpaper and then I stained the top with some water-based special walnut stain. I just used a rag, dipped it into the stain and rubbed the stain very quickly onto the wood, trying to rub it on with the lines in the wood. Water-based stain dries very quickly, so I worked as fast as I could, then I wiped off the excess stain. Easy peasy and no harsh fumes or flammability to worry about. Then I let the stain dry for a few hours and then taped around the top so I wouldn't get any paint on it. I picked out this really cute pink from Rust-Oleum Chalked Paint called Blush Pink. This is my first time ever using Rust-Oleum chalked paint on a makeover, so let's see how it compares to other chalk paint. Since this is a light color though, and some of the table was sanded to bare wood, I could not find any excuse to skip the priming step. So we took it outside and sprayed a couple of light coats of clear shellac onto the table. The clear shellac helps block bleed through stains that will come from the wood or the stain and show up in the paint. And no matter how many coats of water-based paint you use, the stains will keep showing up. And once you top coat, they will get even worse. It also helps chalk paint stick way better to furniture. So it's a win-win here. There is no reason to skip this step. We let the shellac dry overnight and actually for like a week before I finally got back to this project. The instructions on the can say, that you can thin the paint with up to two ounces of water for a quart of paint. So I did the math for how much paint I was mixing into my sprayer and it wasn't as much as I typically would thin out paint. So I was nervous about how it would turn out. I tested the spray though on some cardboard and had to turn my settings way up to work with the thicker paint and the paint looked more splattery than I personally like. I decided though to test the spray on part of the nightstand and I could just sand it smooth if it looked terrible. The first coat honestly didn't look terrible. It wasn't my favorite, but it wasn't terrible either. The spray leveled out pretty well, so I continued on And the second coat was bad. There was so much texture. I think though that I should have mixed the paint again before spraying the second coat because the paint had sat for like an hour or two. And then when the paint was dry on one side of the table, there were bleed through stains popping through the paint. It's so hard to see on camera, but this side just looked different and there were splotchy spots in a few places. So I guess we didn't use enough primer. 
I also spotted a scratch on the drawer that needed filled in. So I filled that in and then I sanded the table all smooth with 220 grit sandpaper and a medium plus grit foam pad in the details. One thing is for sure, this paint sands very easily. I absolutely love when paint sands this easily. I cleaned up all of the dust with my shop vac and tack cloth, and then we sprayed two more coats of clear shellac onto the table. And again, we let it dry overnight before painting it. Behind the scenes, I had been doing some tests to see if I could thin the paint out without compromising it too much. The thinned out paint stuck almost as well as the full strength paint did to the sample board without any sanding or priming beforehand. That convinced me to thin the paint out even more so then I could have a super smooth texture. I sprayed it onto a piece of cardboard again and lowered my settings for the thinner paint. There was still thicker paint though inside the sprayer because I didn't clean it out when I thinned out the paint. So I had to keep adjusting my settings as I sprayed because the paint came out faster and faster as the thinner paint started to come out more and more. And because of that, I ended up spraying a little too much on some of these corners. Thankfully, I caught it before the paint dried though. So I used just a damp rag to wipe off the excess paint down to the layer of shellac. But for the last coat, guess what? It all went on with no issues. Woohoo! <laughs> When the paint was dry, I removed the tape and I apparently did not do a very good job on taping because it had lifted up and paint had gotten underneath it. Thankfully though, it easily wiped off with just a damp rag, even after it had sat there for a couple of days. Then I sprayed the table with three coats of water-based polyurethane in the semi-gloss sheen. This clear top coat gives the paint and stain a more durable protective coating that will protect it from getting scratched or dinged up easily. Plus, it makes furniture so much easier to keep clean. Last but not least, I put the original hardware back on the drawer and here is what it looks like now. It turned out so stinking cute. I love the new look, but I'm curious, what do you think of the new look? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons to see more of our videos. Are you confused and not sure where to start with your furniture makeover? Don't worry, I got your back. Click the link in my comment to download our free painting checklist so you can paint your furniture as if you hired a professional to do it.